Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Let's take a look. Alright, so Korvold, the Fae Cursed King, 5 mana for a 4-4 flyer. When Korvold enters the battlefield or attacks, we get to sacrifice another permanent. And whenever we sacrifice a permanent, we get to put a plus one counter on it and draw a card. So pretty nice value engine if we can kind of feed it and provide sacrifice fodder. Then let's take a look at our deck here. At one mana we've got a Witch's Oven. So that's a sacrifice outlet. Can sacrifice creatures to make food tokens. Food tokens are artifacts we can sacrifice for uh, two mana, I believe, to gain three life. And if the sacrifice creature's toughness was four or greater, we get two food tokens instead. Not sure how good it is, but maybe in this deck it's okay. At two mana, we've got the Enforcer. Pretty nice uh, creature. Get two bodies for just one card to sacrifice for various effects. Priest of Forgotten Gods makes sense. Crater Maker. Paradise Root for a bit of a ramp. Polumbrine Druid with a weird alternate art. Woodland Champion. This looks like my Jun deck I made a video about yesterday. Dreadhorde Invasion. Provide more sacrifice fodder. Mask of Immolation here too makes sense. The Arcane Signet. Gonna see this in every deck. Golden Egg. Also works quite well. And then at 3 you've got Playcrafter. Cranko to make tokens, hopefully. Evolution Sage. Didn't notice we had a major proliferate theme, but I guess Corvold gets plus 1 counters. So we've got a bit of that going on as well. Brontodon makes sense. Another creature that can sacrifice itself. And Judith makes sense too. Mayhem Devil is great. Prowler for more ramp. Savvy Hunter, that's a new one. 3 mana, 3-3. Three, three. When it attacks or blocks, we get to make a food token. And we can sack two foods to draw a card. That's a pretty interesting wording. It sounds a little strange. Sacrifice two foods. But uh, I guess uh, this is the world we're living in now. And then Rhythm of the Wilds to give creatures hastes or plus one counters. And then at 4, we've got the Vampire. Fine Broker's great. And bake into a pie, another food-related uh, item. So probably don't want to play the John deck if you're hungry. Destroy a creature, make a food token. And then Angrath to provide more sacrifice fodder. And a Death Sprouts. And then at 5 we've got Sir Conrad chilling in this deck as well. Sir Conrad's just in every deck, apparently. Rapacious Dragon also plays well with our champion and treasure tokens in general that we can sacrifice, play well with Corvold. Keeper of Fables, that's a bit of a strange one. And Moldervine Reclamation's great. And then we've got a bunch of expensive cards. Thorn Mammoth, 7 mana 6-6 six, six Trampler. When it or another creature enters the battlefield, the Mammoth fights up to one target creature we don't control. Alright, so the Mammoth uh, doesn't mess around. Can be quite strong. We've got Taste of Death, 6 mana. Each player sacrifices 3 creatures and we get to create 3 food tokens. It's pretty uh, gruesome art. I can dig it. Blood Soaked Altar makes sense. Izoni. And then Find Finality as our sweeper. Alright, so there's a lot going on in this deck. It's a little bit all over the place, but the sacrifice synergies are the thing that kind of tie the deck together. And then uh, let's take a look at our mana base real quick. So this one gets Stomping Grounds as the only shock land. Let's take a look at uh, new arts. Ooh, that's a pretty forest. So a bunch of spooky forests. And then some more mountains, and then the swamps. Ooh, that's cool. I think we've seen these before. Alright, let's uh, take this for a spin. Haven't played against 
the Teller of Tales yet. Five mana. I guess we'll read it in a second here. Um, yeah, the sand seems fine. These two arts in particular are amongst my favorites so far. So nice to have them both in my opening hand. Definitely gives you a Stonehenge feel. So Teller of Tales, five mana two for vigilance. Whenever you cast a creature spell, draw a card, and then you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield. And three mana to return a creature you control to its owner's hand. Ooh, this is gonna be pretty dirty with like a frilled mystic. Tome of Legends, basically a way to draw a ton of cards. All right, let's play Enforcer. All right, that could also get pretty annoying with uh, Chulain. I guess I'm fine. Yeah, just playing Devil saying go can't really attack because of the spirit. If I could have attacked, I think I probably would have. Trading this for the 3 3 seems acceptable. Also, can't forget about Evolving Wilds plus Mayhem Devil dealing 1 damage. So, that could definitely come up. Alright, we found our victim. This Wayfinder is not gonna know what's gonna hit him. Ooh, Frilled Mystic on top. Not looking forward to that. Although, at least they're still missing the second green source. And we get to play a Kranko here. All right. Uh oh, they have something. A run away together to bounce both our creatures. Fair enough. Um, guess forest is fine. Maybe I should get another mountain actually. And I do want to attack, a reason being I want a clear path for Krenko. Didn't work. Have I seen the new Garak? I have. Looks pretty interesting. I quite like the design. It's going to be difficult to compete with a lot of the powerful 6 mana Planeswalkers in Standard, but it uh, could definitely see some play. Prison Realm, my Krenko. Fair enough. So we know the two cards in the opponent's hand here. And the Frilled Mystic lock is going to be pretty obnoxious. So definitely want to try and play Corvolt here while we can. Alright, that one could be good. Alright, so we've got Corvold in play. Opponent's got a Frilled Mystic in hand that we know about. They're gonna tap out for Chulane. It's also a pretty cool animation. Alright, so what's our plan here? Six mana total. Just casting Find Finality is pretty appealing. Attack first, and then Finality away the opponent's board. So let's attack. Sack my token. What do I think about the adventure mechanic? I think it's pretty cool. Definitely looking forward to seeing more cards with it. Hopefully they didn't draw into an answer for Corvold. They're digging. And our point explodes. Alright, so Corvold getting it done here. We got a bunch of fairy vandals. 
flash flying. All right, could uh, definitely see some play. What about this hand? Do I have some ramp with the Prowler? Don't hate it. I guess we have a few Graveyard Matters cards, but for now I'm just playing the Prowler. It's possible I should not have played the Egg and just played Evolving Wilds, so I could make sure to like go Prowler into Corvold. Kind of hoping to just draw into a land at some points. There's a Banner, and of course sacrificing the Egg to Corvold is pretty good value. All right, no such luck. So I guess we're just gonna attack and play Krenko then. And I'm probably fetching Swamp. That's fine. I guess they will get to draw quite a few cards, or uh, get to make quite a few treasures. Since I'm about to draw a few extra cards here, but I'll take a beating from Krenko. I mean, I could play it conservatively, not give them any treasures, just hit them with Krenko in the meantime. But I think I want to get Korvold out there. So play Korvold, sacrifice a golden egg. Probably should have attacked first here actually with Krenko, because now I'm giving them an extra treasure, which could maybe let them cast something to kill Krenko. So probably could have sequenced it better. Oh well. Alright, we do get to attack. Maker can also deal with the banner. Brontodon can blow up the Smothering Tithe. So we're doing okay, but yeah, giving the opponent those two treasure tokens could definitely come back to bite us. Ooh. Well, that's uh. Quite a setback. And there goes our board. Alright, I guess we're dead now. Command zone's fine. I mean, they would have been able to cast Massacre Girl regardless of the treasure tokens. So I don't know if I could have really played around it. Yeah, we're super far behind now. Seven mana, so we're pretty far from casting Corvold again. So the way we have to kind of recover is Taste of Death, maybe killing a bunch of the opponent stuff. So we should try and play around that. I guess for now I can play Brontodon, kill the Tithe. And I guess I can wait on killing it. So your game plan here is... Try and cast Taste of Death with basically as few creatures as possible in play. And then once the board is clear, try and rebuild. Although it's going to be a pretty long road ahead of us. I think I want to be mana efficient and use it now. Suppose I could like play Crater Maker next turn, 
double block Massacre Girl and then sacrifice both before damage to kill Banner and to kill Tithe. Nah, let's just kill this now. Massacre Girl has Manus, so I couldn't block it with a Brontodon, otherwise I would have jumped and sacked. Alright, find Finality. Sadly, they have a Scrabbling Clause in play, so it's not going to be super effective. Although I can just cast a Finality half if I get one more land to wide board as well. So we do have some Sweepers here. Crater Maker, Kill Banner could be a thing. If I had more red mana, I could have maybe tried to combine Devil with Crater Maker to deal 3 damage to their commander, but... Yeah, and I don't really want to cast Finds since they have the Scrabbling Claws up. If they didn't have the Claws, then casting Finds, given that we have Taste of Death in hand, would have been reasonable. Uh-oh. Opponent's going too wide for the Taste of Death. So I'm gonna be forced to... Finality instead here. That comes into play tapped. I guess if I play the devil it survives. Finality if I put two counters on it, so that's fine. Um, Prowler's gone. There are no counter spells in the fairy deck. It's good to know. Attacks with all. And down to eight we go. Alright. Dice to finality. So that's fine. Alright. I guess we're gonna give it away here, but... I'll go face... Alright, so we're kind of going to be at parity here after this finality. Which is all we can ask for. They wiped our board, we wiped their board. They just have a bit of a life total advantage here. 24 to 8, and they get to add to the board first. So we're behind, but not by all that much. Especially considering we have a taste of death to maybe wipe the board again. And replace the commander. Alright, I guess I can replay my own. Although, then the taste of death becomes a lot worse. Since I don't really want to sack my own dragon. And it's going to be a while before I have three creatures to sacrifice. So maybe I should just like play some random dorks. How bad is it if they get to untap with this? It's definitely an issue, but I think I gotta play Corvold. Alright, Playcrafter could be good if they don't make more tokens. We'll see. Yeah, there is a, a good argument for just casting the Taste of Death there, killing Alila before they make a bunch of fairies and we don't even get to kill Alila. But using it as a one-for-one -one removal spell without progressing our own board also doesn't feel great. I guess we would get to make three food tokens, and we can then sacrifice those to Corvold. Would have been reasonable. Alright, I guess to the command zone you go. Opponent with a witching well. Ooh, some delicious food. It's all the same food token. It's not the healthiest diet. 
All right. Keeps coming back. But now the Playcrafter is a pretty nice answer. So this costs me 9 mana, 3, 6, 7, 8. If I draw land, I can play Corvold and a ton of food tokens to sacrifice to it. So we can keep Corvold nice and fed. Uh-oh. What is this? 7 mana, 4, 4. Artifact creatures you control have flying and at the beginning of combats. You may have target a non-creature artifact, become a 4-4, which also has flying. Well, we did draw the land, luckily. So you get to play Corvold, but uh, these elders don't mess around. Have some pie. All right, some more pie. It's gonna be nice next turn if we're not dead. And we'll exile. Don't think Krenko's gonna get there anymore. Law Mage is binding. It's not too bad. We still get to draw cards from sacrificing permanents. But we do have to chum block here, which doesn't feel great. Got a double chump. That's unfortunate. Yeah, probably too far behind now. So, well, still had a pretty sweet game here. Opponent had Massacre Girl to send us back to the Stone Ages. We had finality to recover, and then they were able to resolve this workshop elders to take over the late game. Can uh, bake them into a pie, but these are still gonna be four fours. Can sacrifice some food to gain three, draw a card with Corvold, see what I can find. So I'll start there. Sacrifice food, <laughs> nice. Sir Conrad doesn't really help. Let's sacrifice more food. Up to eight. So I can bake the elders into a pie. And then still sack a token so I'm not dead. Oh, I guess never mind. If the elders dies, they no longer have flying. All right, so definitely want to kill the elders. And no reason to sack the last food now in case I need to chum block. I don't necessarily have to chum block, but it's an option. Can just gain three. I think that's what I'm going to do here. Keep my paradise root around. We have a lot of mana, but I might want a 2-1 body to help me block next turn. That's the reasoning, because like Judith plus Paradise Druid cleanly trades for a 4-4. So I don't see a reason to chump right now. Well, probably not activating the altar anytime soon. Uh-oh. Opponent with all these heavy hitters. Shimmer Dragon. Tap two untapped artifacts to draw a card. Five, six flyer. I guess Bloodsoaked Altar can make a demon.
So I guess I'm not that on board yet. So this trades for the dragon, this trades for a 4-4 four four and this chum blocks. Although now they can just start drawing cards instead of attacking. But that buys us more time. Alright, opponent's just sending. Because Judith doesn't trigger off tokens, so I only get to deal 2 damage here. If uh, Judith triggered off the dragon token dying, then I could have killed both. Oh, I guess, yeah, our opponent can just sack it in response. Makes sense. But I guess same goes for the claws. Well, this was a hard-fought battle. I guess it's time for Sir Conrad. And then I can pull and Bright Druid, put a counter somewhere, probably on Sir Conrad. Play Sage, play Land, Proliferate. This has been an awesome game. I thought we were like dead for sure when they played the Massacre Girl. I guess it would have been reasonable too to put the counter on the Evolution Sage and Proliferate to kind of diversify a little bit. Yeah, maybe that would have been better. Because now if they kill Sir Conrad, I'm in trouble. They probably have enough mana to replay their uh, commander at this point. Let's see, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It's going to be Sephara instead. And I think Sephara is going to deal the finishing blow here. Temple of Malady. I guess I can replay Corvold still. And then Land lets me proliferate. It's still only going to be 6-6, six, six, which is not enough to kill or trade for Sephara. Man, so close. Should probably sack my land. I guess I could have sacked Alter, but there's a chance I can gain life somehow and activate it once again. Does this do it? Not really. So I get a 6-6 six, six Corvold and a giant Sir Conrad. But um, yeah, not quite enough. Attacking with Sir Conrad probably doesn't accomplish a whole lot. But it's going to go digging with Cancer's Insights. Golden Egg. Yeah, if only we had one more counter on Corvold to trade for Sephara. But now we're going to be forced to chum block. Oh well. Alright, I think uh, this might be the actual end of the line. I think we're out of options. I can activate Sir Conrad a few times. Don't think there's anything I can mill over that's relevant. Yeah, I maybe should have put Corvold in the graveyard in case I drew a, a fine broker. Yeah, that's also fair. If we put Corvold in the graveyard, they could scrabbling closet away. I think uh, there's only one thing left to do, chat. And you know what it is. First off, uh, Sir Conrad gets to be activated a few times. But, uh, it's gonna happen. Didn't think we were decking the opponent here. 
but what we can do is commit some honorable seppuku. Are you sure? Yes, I am. No, that was a pretty epic game. All right, well, we've got uh, two pretty nice grindy games with Savage Hunter. Got two games in with the Knight's Charge. Time for the next one here, Wild Bounty. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.